Ukraine war trap. I am pleased to give a presentation on how to get your manuscript published in a high quality medical journal. So before starting about publishing the journal, I want to make a comment to all of you who are listening about the value of international relationship and collaboration. And as you can see from this slide, I've had the privilege of knowing some of the icons in Russian oncology, Professor Bloken, Professor Dmitry, uh, uh, tri uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Trepeznikov, and two very good colleagues, uh, Lev Demidov and uh, Dmitry Karkovich, who studied under me at MD Anderson Cancer Center. And the key point here is that if we travel, develop friendships and collaborations with other colleagues around the world, we can not only have a better personal relationship, but also a collaboration that leads to better scientific studies and promotes our own career. So the presentation that I'm giving today has all been published in the Annals of Surgical Oncology. So on PubMed or other search engines, you can get this exact talk uh, online uh, as published in 2018 in the Annals of Surgical Oncology. I also want to thank those who contributed with their advice for this publication and this presentation, who were the editors and chiefs of some of the major surgical journals in the world and in the United States, as you can see on this list. So in thinking about your own biomedical research, whether it's uh, translational research, clinical research, outcomes research, what we all do in our research process is generating the hypothesis, gathering the resources and the data, conducting the research, and then analyzing the data. And then my key point about this is your research is only half completed because the other half, which is equally important, is writing an abstract and presenting this at a medical or scientific meeting and writing the manuscript for scientific publication. So ask yourself, what good is the data collection and all your efforts, the hours that you spend, unless your colleagues can one, find the article in the medical literature, read the paper and believe the results, understand the unique contributions of your research, and then after having read your paper, incorporating your data and conclusions into their own fund of knowledge, and then in the end, to quote or cite your paper in their own publications. So I want to, to challenge you as you think about doing research that the data is only as good as you can, one, get it published, two, your colleagues will find it, three, they will understand your message, and then incorporate that data into their own knowledge and quote your paper in their own publications. So as a journal editor of several journals, I wanted to just go over the criteria that we use for accepting manuscripts. And the basic message is papers have to be significant and original. In terms of significance, does it pass what I call the so what test? Can I understand what is the significance of the uh, conclusions from the paper? Is it original? Uh, and then after that, does it have the methodological and statistical validity? Is it ethical? Does it impact on clinical practice or on science? And is the article citable by other authors? And very importantly, is the clarity of the message and the data presentation. 
And finally, the appropriateness or the relevance of the subject on the readership of the people who read our journal. So as you look at these criteria, these are the things that we go through as a reviewer and as an editor in deciding whether to accept your manuscript for publication in our journal. So I wanted to, in these next few slides, show you a few articles that I published early in my career, not later in my career. And there's also a message here about uh, career development. This was my first publication as an assistant professor on melanoma. And it became a classic paper uh, that has been cited in the literature 458 times. And the reason that it was published and quoted so often is because this is one of the first times that the Cox regression analysis or multifactorial analysis was used in a clinical presentation. And then in our title, we compared for the first time the two primary staging methods, Clark's and Breslow's, Clark's level of invasion, Breslow thickness. And these were put in the title. So one of my key points here is the title is very important that if people are going to go to the article, they must find it on a PubMed search based upon the title of the paper. So spending the time on presenting the uniqueness of your paper, both in the primary title and the secondary title is very important. The other key message uh, in this is that this was a publication that came from the collaboration from the departments of surgery, pathology, biostatistics, and our cancer center. So the other key point here is collaborations among investigators at different departments is always going to provide more unique and valuable information than if it comes from one person or one department. This was another paper when I was a young investigator. And the key point here is the title was valuable for people who saw this as a guide for their surgical management. So it wasn't just publishing, this is my research, look at what a great investigator I am. The title said, this is a parameter, tumor thickness, that you as a surgeon can use as a guide to surgical management. And I think because the title was interesting, it was widely cited by others in the literature. The other key point here in terms of career development is the importance of research collaborations. And also when I was a young investigator, I collaborated with my colleagues in Australia and we combined our data on melanoma from the United States and in Sydney, Australia. And in doing this, this became the largest combined series ever published on melanoma at that time. So this also shows you that by combining our data and publishing it together, we could then publish the largest series of melanoma in the world and have a validation not only of our data in our institution, but showing that it works in other institutions as well. So here again, the title is very important in people searching for this and looking for colla uh, collaborations and significant articles. And as you can see, this article was also published many times as well. Here is another important message for all of you, and that is the importance of collaborating in international clinical trials. When I was a young investigator, I joined the WHO Melanoma Group. And as you can see in this list of authors is uh, Professor Nikolai Trapistikov from Russia, who is one of my very good colleagues that we worked together. And because of that collaboration with a with the Europeans, with the Russians, with Americans, we were able to have a publication in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is one of the most highly cited journals in the world. Because of this relationship as well, 
I went on and conducted a second trial in the United States, a prospective randomized surgical trial that even today is used as part of the standards of care for uh, surgical treatment of melanoma around the world. Then again, for your career development to show you the value of global collaborations, we went on as I developed my own research uh, to do research uh, and combining melanoma databases from America, from Europe, from Australia and other centers so that we could combine a large series of patients and use this to validate a new staging system that is still used today in melanoma. And as you can see, as we developed increasing collaborations around the world and had validation of prognostic factors for melanoma, this is a paper that has been cited over 1,700 times. And then finally, that information was used to have practice changing standards of the staging system for melanoma that is used worldwide because of our continued global collaboration, which in this case involved over 31,000 patients with early melanoma and almost 8,000 patients with advanced melanoma as a way of validating a new staging system that is still used today. And as you can see, this is one of my most highly cited papers because of that collaboration worldwide with over 3,000 citations. So let me go back now and, and discuss as a journal editor of the Annals of Surgical Oncology, which I was the founding editor in chief, we received each week over 60 manuscripts a week. They're received electronically. Uh, Deborah Whippen, our executive editor, assigns this to section editors who in turn assign two reviewers to review the paper. Their comments and recommendations along with that of the section editor, so we have three opinions, are passed on to Dr. Mark Rowe, our executive editor for a final decision. And then we make one of three decisions based upon the manuscript that is submitted. One, we accept it with maybe minor revisions, or two, we will reject the paper, but with advice to resubmit. So if you get a manuscript from us that says, I'm sorry, we reject your paper, but we would advise you to resubmit after you've addressed the comments made by the reviewer, that's saying, this is close, and if you uh, revise the manuscript and address the issues that are raised by the reviewer, it might have a chance of being accepted upon resubmission. Or we might reject it out of hand. If there's not an advice to resubmit, it may be better for you to move on and submit the manuscript to another journal. So this is very typical of many journals that you will get one of these three messages after you've uh, submitted your manuscript and after the editorial review. So I wanted to list on this slide some of the common mistakes that cause manuscripts to be rejected. First, the results have previously been reported or this is not new information. Sometimes a confirmation for the first or second time uh, is still original enough that we might accept it. But if this is well known in the literature, in our journal or other journals, this is a primary reason that manuscripts might be rejected. Second is the data has been presented or published elsewhere. We do searches on the content of your manuscript and we can tell whether this has been published in other journals somewhere else and this is yet another reason that the manuscript may be rejected. The third reason is the study may not be of sufficient interest to our readership. We know our readers, they're going to be surgeons who are interested in cancer management. And if this is a manuscript that may be too far from our readership, 
we would not accept the manuscript. The second is we oftentimes have a statistician that is reviewing your data. And if we feel like the statistics are not valid or the controls are not valid, this is yet another reason. Other comments would be inadequate descriptions of the methodology. The data presentation is too diffuse. And this is actually common from some manuscripts that there are multiple tables with a lot of data. It doesn't focus on a hypothesis and a focus on a specific issue, but shows data presentation that is too diffuse. Also, conclusions might be vague or not supported by the data. Or finally, the manuscript does not conform to the journal requirements. And then also, for those of you who are publishing where English is not your primary uh, language, poor writing. We're looking for manuscripts that have polished English. And sometimes the data may be good, the hypothesis may be good, but it's poorly written. And we may send it back and ask you to have editors review this and put the manuscript in more polished or better English. So I want to go over with you next about a five-step process for getting your manuscript accepted. And I'll go through this uh, each individually about the preparation, drafting the manuscript, submitting your manuscript to the journal, what happens when we, after our review, when you received our manuscript communication, and then about revisions and resubmission. So step one in terms of preparation, a key point for all of you in Russia since English is not going to be your native language, is be a student of writing in fluent English. Whether we like it or not, English is the scientific language of the world. In all of the journals in the world that our highly cited journal publish in English. So the more you can have your manuscript written in fluent English, and that means maybe having an editor who is very good in English to review and help you in writing the manuscript in fluent English. This is a key point for your communication. Because remember, even if our manuscript is accepted, if the reader does not understand what you're saying, they won't uh, cite this in their own literature. So the second thing is decide the journal that you want to publish in, the right audience and the impact factor of the journal. We all want to have our manuscripts published in the most highly cited journals, but our journal and many journals that are highly cited only accept one in five or one in six manuscripts. So the highly cited journals um, may review your manuscript, but not, re but not accept them, even though they are publishable, because we receive so many journals and we can only accept a few. Another key point, and it's amazing to me that authors don't follow that, read the instructions and follow them. There are very specific things that we're looking for in the format of the manuscript and so forth, and they're all written very precisely. So read the instructions and follow them. And finally, early on, I recommend that you decide on the authorship, who, if you have multiple authors, and the sequence of the authors. It's better to do that at the beginning than at the end, where there can be some political uh, differences on authorship at the end. Do this at the beginning, including who is the corresponding or the senior author. So look, for all of you, there are many different sources that you can go to that are helpful in how to write manuscripts and in, that are publishable. This is just one example that you can get on a PubMed search from the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors. Uh, Springer Verlog, which publishes our journal, The Annals of Surgical Oncology, has an author academy with very good and practical information, as you can see over here, on how to write a manuscript with more
more details than is just in this uh, le le lecture. So this is just an example of the details that you can get from the Springer Scholar One Manuscript Author Guide. And finally, in our own journal, the Annals of Surgical Oncology, there are also instructions to the author, uh, resource centers, and other editorial services, including specific instructions to those who are writing manuscripts or contributing to our journal that are very specific. So step two is preparing your manuscript. And I think the first thing to think about when you're putting, assembling your manuscript is what is the hypothesis that you're testing and what is the data that supports that hypothesis? You don't need to tell us all the research that you did unless it is specific for the hypothesis. So have a clean, logical, and direct message that addresses a specific hypothesis. Then interpret your results from the perspective of other publications. What is the context of your work as it fits in the rest of the literature? And what is the significance of your work, which I recommend you put in the first sentences in the discussion? Next is be sure your, your um, manuscript is really different, not just a longer follow-up of a few more patients or um, a longer follow-up of six years instead of five years, make sure that it's really unique and different from your previous publications. And then in general, don't divide up your results of a single study in a multiple publication unless each one is complementary, not duplicative. And oftentimes, if you have a major presentation with a lot of data, it may be better to break it up into a series of publications. And then finally, after you prepared your manuscript in draft, send it to your co-authors to gain their collective input, especially those that are coming from different departments. I often, in my own manuscripts, send this to a colleague who is not one of my authors and ask them to give me the feedback of what's the main message that you got out of this. And if their interpretation of the message is not the same as mine, even before I've submitted the manuscript, I want to go back and clarify my message to make sure that those who are readers understand my hypothesis, the data that supports the hypothesis, and my conclusions. So it's very helpful, even before you submit your manuscript, to have some colleagues who have not seen your manuscript or know your research, but represent the readers of the journal to give you feedback about the clarity of your message and the key points. So this is a outline of scientific manuscripts that we all follow. And I'll just go over a few points. First of all, the title is very important. Remember, if somebody is doing a search they do this by a PubMed search and they look at the title. If the title is not informative and interesting, they won't click on and even read the abstract and go on to the rest of your journal. So remember that the title should be an informative statement that will capture the reader's interest, especially on a literature search. The second is the abstract is the most widely read part of any research article. Think about it when you're doing your own literature search. You may read the title, you read the abstract, but oftentimes you don't read the whole manuscript, you just read the abstract. So remember that the abstract is the most widely read part of your research article, and only a minority of people will go on and read the, first, the full article. So then, in the journal format, the introduction sets the stage for presentation of the study. The methods should have enough detail or citations to methodology that others can reproduce your research, both in design and execution of the study and the statistical methodology that's used. 
and then the results should contain the data and the results that are germane to the hypothesis of the theme of the manuscript. You don't need to show us all the data that you've collected, but only the data that is germane to the, the manuscript. Then finally, on the discussion, summarizes this study that you've done and describes both the significance and the context of your results with previously published work. And then references don't have to be like in a uh, review, only cite those manuscripts by you that are previous and related work by others, not a hundred or so references, but only those that are germane to this specific study. So I find for myself and for many authors, one of the major roadblocks of getting a manuscript is what I call facing the blank page. If you're like me and maybe a bit obsessive, it's hard to write a really good first draft. So I have to give myself permission to just get my thoughts on paper. So this is how I do this on facing the blank page. First, I decide on the main theme and I look at this and say, is this original and significant? And is it relevant? And then I write a title page with the title and I write down the hypothesis to be tested. Then I go over and outline the materials and methods. That's very easy to do. Then I assemble the figures and the tables. I outline the results. Then I write, outline the discussion section, write the abstract, and then last I do the introduction. So for me, this is a way that I can systematically go through and get the first draft done. And then I progressively do editing, moving things around. Um, I usually go through 10 or 15 drafts before I get a manuscript set ready for submission. So this is step three in submitting your manuscript. First, you wanna follow the journal instructions and submit the manuscript in the appropriate format, the length and define the category. Remember, when you click the boxes on the category, that will decide who are the reviewers uh, in that category of a journal like ours who has multiple uh, sections in it. You can, if you want, it's optional, give suggestions of those who should or should not review your article. We do um, acknowledge this. We may or may not follow your advice. Do not submit the same manuscript to simultaneously the two journals um, and then hope that one of them uh, will accept it. If you just one journal at a time, get the reviewer's results. If it's rejected, then go on to the next journal and then carefully choose the title and the keywords. So another important thing in submitting your manuscript is the keywords that you use because when uh, readers do a, uh, a search, they will look at keywords and they may or may not find your, your manuscript if you've not put in a sufficient number of keywords. So here's step four, receiving the editor's communication. This usually occurs two to four weeks after you've submitted the manuscript. And remember that it is very uncommon for us to accept a manuscript as it's submitted. Revisions by the reviewers, which represents the readers of the journal, will always improve your message. So if the manuscript is accepted, make the changes that are as appropriate to address as, as suggested by the reviewers, and then resubmit the manuscript with both a clean and a red line copy to show where you made the changes. Now, some reviewer comments may or may not be germane or acceptable to you, and that's okay. You may not accept all of the reviewer's comments, but when you write your letter to the editor with your revised manuscript, you have a specific rebuttal and it's okay to say, I don't agree with this reviewer's comments for the following reasons. So you want to write a letter to the editor 
with a point-by-point -point response to the reviewer's comments and suggested suggestions. And then remember, if your manuscript is rejected, don't feel insulted and don't give up. Remember that less than one in five manuscripts are accepted by the top journals. So that you may need to have a strategy for what is the next journal I'm going to submit it to. Because if you have reasonably good research, there's always a journal that can get your manuscript accepted. Obviously, we all want our manuscripts published in the best journals based upon the citation index, but you should never give up and always find a way after looking at the reviewer's comments and finding a journal that will publish your manuscript. So this is step five, revisions and resubmission. Remember that the recommendations by the reviewers will make the, your manuscript better almost all of the time. They reflect the readers of the journal and are giving you written feedback to make your manuscript better. If it is rejected with advice to resubmit, defy, decide if the reviewer comments can be addressed and that you then want to resubmit to the journal or move on to another journal. If it's rejected outright, Decide along with your co-authors about which alternative journal to send it to next. So this is in summary, the multi-step process for getting your manuscripts accepted. So step one is confirm who your co uh, colleagues are who are authors, select a journal, read the journal's instruction. Step two, prepare the manuscript, ensure that all of the authors contribute to and approve the final version. Step three, submit the manuscript with all of the author's conflict of interest statements that are disclosed in the manuscript. Step four is receive the editor's communication and revise your manuscript according to the editorial review. And then finally, step five is resubmitting the revised manuscript with changes highlighted in a summary letter to the editor listing your responses to the reviewer comments. Another advice to all of you, especially those who are uh, younger investigators, is think about writing from a reviewer's perspective. So if you have senior colleagues in your institution or in your nation um, who are mentors, who are reviewing articles, ask them if you can write the initial uh, draft of their review and that gives you the opportunity of writing from a reviewer's perspective. So find opportunities to review journal manuscripts. And then the more you do that, that critical thinking about key points in the manuscript of you know, other manuscripts that you're reviewing can help polish your own writing skills. Return the manuscript that you're reviewing within the time requested. And after writing a number of reviews in the journals that you are reviewing, write to the editor-in-chief about joining the editor editorial board. We almost never have somebody come on our editorial board without having done some reviews, and we look at the timeliness and the quality of the reviews before we make that decision. So here are my conclusions. Remember, as I said at the beginning, that publishing your research is the final endpoint of scientific activity. To the aim is not just to get your research published, but to make it understandable so that other colleagues, the readers of the journal, will use your information and cite it in the literature as they write manuscripts or editorial reviews or book chapters. Be fluent in scientific English. I understand that Russian language and English language is very different and it's sometimes difficult uh, to have be fluent in scientific English. But like any skill, the more you do it, the better you will be. And remember that English is the language of communicating in the best journals worldwide. Another advice would be to have a editor or an editorial service, especially people who are uh, speak native 
English, review and edit your journal, your manuscript, to publish it in good scientific English. Pay as much attention to your manuscript writing skills as you do for your research skills. I've told young people that writing is a research skill that is equally important than all the research that you do in the data collection. And then finally, submit your research to the best journals first, address the reviewer's critiques, and then resubmit your manuscript to the same or to another journal. And then finally, just my encouragement to all of you is that your research in Russia is valuable, not only for those who are reading it in your country, but throughout the world. So the more you can publish in English, the more people, not only in Russia, but around the world can uh, receive your information, learn from your research, and use that in their own uh, practice or in their own scientific research. So I want to uh, say Spasiba Bolshoi. Thank you so much from MD Anderson Cancer Center here in Houston, Texas.